Welcome back everyone to another Achilles Getting Started video. In our last video, we talked about authentication methods. Welcome back everyone to another Achilles Getting Started video. In our last video, we created some authentication methods and explained what they are and what they do. And in this video, we're going to talk about access roles and access roles are the permissions that are given to authentication methods. So access roles give companies the ability to limit human or machine access rights, and Achilles offers a very powerful and granular role-based access control system that follows least privileged access principles. You can associate authentication methods with access roles, and you can create as many roles as you want, each with its own set of permissions. So the idea is that an authentication method is like a new user, and access roles are what give that user the permissions to create, edit, delete, for example, resources within a keyless. Now, when you associate an authentication method with a role, you also have the option to set something called subclaims. Now, subclaims are policies for the chosen authentication method, i.e. the user, that can be defined within a role, giving specific groups or users authorization to use that role. Subclaims can be something like a group name and an email address, which would limit access to a specific user or it could be some other identifier that gives access to any number of specific users for the given authentication method. So that's basically an extra layer of granularity that you can add for true least privileged access with Achilles. Now that we know a bit more about role-based access control, let's go ahead and create our first access role. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and first click on access roles, and we're going to create our first access role. We'll call it API role one, and it will be just in the root directory at this point. And what we see here is two different options. We need to associate an authentication method, and we need to add some specific permissions. Okay, so we'll first go ahead and associate the authentication method API role one and API auth one. And of course, this is the area where you can have subclaims. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to give access to secrets and keys. You do have the ability to set access role permissions, authentication method permissions, and targets permissions. Um, and so here we're just going to do, for our demonstration purposes, we're going to do secrets and keys. So go ahead and add the DevOps folder, um, which we set up earlier, dev folder and DevOps folder. So in this case, we're only going to give access to the DevOps folder. And we'll allow to create, read, and update. We'll go ahead and click Add. And now we have our permission profile ready to go. So let's do it. go ahead and do the same thing, except we'll do it from the CLI. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, we can actually do it from here, the Docs page, right? We have the Access Roles page set. And we'll create a role. So first we're going to create a role. We'll call it... API role two. Great, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we uh, give some permissions. So we're doing it a little bit different order this time. We'll do permissions first and then we'll associate it. So if we go ahead and grab this first command, giving again, read, create and update capabilities. And in this case, we will actually just give access to say the dev folder and API role two. Okay. And that is going to give us the permissions that we requested. And the next thing we're going to do is associate the authentication method with the role. So grab that API role two. And the authentication method we want is API auth2. And that is now associated. So we can actually go back to our console. We see API role2 was created successfully. It was associated with API auth2. And we gave access to create, read, and update only for the dev folder, the dev path. Okay. So next thing we want to do is go ahead and actually start using the authentication method, in essence, the credentials that we had previously. And we're gonna go ahead and log into an account. So we're using 
the API auth one authentication uh, method here. And this is the access ID and we have the access key which we saved in an earlier video. And what we're gonna do is grab the access ID here, open up a brand new console and open up in a private window so that nothing is saved. Okay, and at the bottom here, you're gonna see that you have the option for access key because we're using the API key option. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the authentication CSV file, that uh, the credentials that we saved earlier. And we're gonna go ahead and add in the access key as well. And when we click sign in, what we're gonna see is a similar type of console here except all we're going to see is the access that we have. So you notice that the menu sidebar looks different. We don't have the ability to create authentication methods or access roles. We don't have access to any other secrets and keys except what's in the DevOps folder, which is all we gave access to. And of course, we can view the value of the secret here as well, like we can do for anything else. And we will have the ability to also, for example, create a secret so we can do test one, let's say, and give a value of test two, click finish, and we've created another static secret for ourselves here. And anyone that has access to this DevOps directory will also have access to that secret. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show how to use that API key to access the Achilles account, this time through the CLI. So if we go back to our docs, we can go and find the API key reference here. And what we're gonna do is run this Achilles configure command, which is going to actually configure the CLI to work with that API key we created. So we'll go ahead and grab that code command. And what we're gonna do is create a profile. And this profile should match the authentication method you're using just for clarity. But a profile is a uh, what Achilles uses to connect the uh, CLI to the authentication method. So the profile we'll call API auth one, which is what we already used. And we'll go ahead and grab the access ID, go back into here, grab API auth one, the access ID, and we'll put in, put in the API key, access key. That next here, we're gonna do it for security purposes, of course, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab that access key, paste it in, and we've now configured our CLI to work with that authentication method to have access to the account we were in before. So the next thing to keep in mind is that we have different profiles configured now in our CLI. One is the default profile, which when you run any command, it will automatically run it with minus minus profile default, basically. And this profile, since we gave it a name, API auth, auth1, we need to run any commands for that uh, user with that profile in the command. So let's do, for example, a list items just to see what we have using the default profile just to show the difference, right? So the default profile in this case would be like the admin. So a key list, list items. And you'll notice that we have a pretty big list. These are things that we've created um, over time. So for example, just to show the difference here, already you see my DFC key one, right? That's the encrypt one of the encryption keys that we created. Now, if I run the same command, but instead I run it with list items minus minus profile API auth one, I'm only going to get a list of items that the auth one user is able to access. So we see here only in the DevOps folder, DevOps foo. We have DevOps test one, and that's how we know the difference in terms of the profiles that we're using. And that is how role-based access controls work with our authentication methods. And we will see you in the next video.